one and we're live good afternoon everyone and welcome to wacky wednesday here at all brand sewing center if you hear a little bit of activity in the background we do have one of our kimberbell belt classes going on and we've invited them to stay as our live audience today <laughs> I am so excited about today's Wacky and so is everyone here because for the first time and maybe a long time, maybe ever, we have a special guest star today and she's give, over here giving me <laughs> eye rolls about the VIP guest star uh, uh, countenance that I've given her. This is my friend Margaret Storty and Margaret is a wonderful quilter. We actually first met at book club. We became book buddies long before either of us knew that we sewed, quilted, did all this fun stuff together. But over the years, we've gotten to know more about each other. And about three years ago, Margaret's Kenmore mm -hmm. died. And I sold her a Soprano sewing machine. Now, for those of you that know our line, the Soprano is the top of our midline machines. And it's the one that's the first one in the line that has the pivot function. It comes with the extension table. It has all kinds of fun stitches built in, tons of great feet. It's a fabulous machine. Well, Margaret is a quilter. She's been quilting for many years. She and her mom started mm -hmm. quilting together. And I'll let her tell you much, some of that story. She used to teach some quilt classes many years ago on the in Seattle, right? Mm -hmm. In Seattle. and. She took to that soprano like a duck to water. And the things that she has created in the last three years, I'm gonna tell you flat out. So if any of you have seen the photos online, they're gonna blow your mind. Because Margaret has become, a, I'm gonna say it, she's an expert. She has really mastered the art of free motion quilting on the soprano sewing machine. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this had came through <laughs> Uh, can we stay sane through COVID? <laughs> 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 Margaret is, just, just as a little background, is also a choral teacher. She teaches chorus at the Appomattox Governor's School in Petersburg, right? That's right. And so if you can imagine, being a teacher over the last two years was difficult enough, but try teaching choral classes on Zoom from your <laughs> home and keeping it going. I know, Gayla's over here shaking her head. Well, Margaret did it, and one of the things that she did, I remember this, well, she actually put together an entire choral concert with her students on Zoom, and I think you had a friend of yours put it together as a video, mm -hmm. yeah. and with background um, uh, images and all kinds. It was abs It was Christmas, wasn't it? Yes, it we, was a Christmas. We picked thing. out images on public yeah. domain and yes. put together kind of a slideshow. Yeah. And it was amazing. But in the meantime, between all the good part, Margaret needed something to keep her sane, and guess what? It was. <laughs> it was the Soprano sewing machine. So, Margaret. Tell us a little bit about your quilting journey. You have an idea of where you want to kind of start talking about where you started quilting. I do. Um, so I started quilting around 1980 with my mom. Um, we, we had, my mom had inherited two family quilts that really intrigued her. Neither one of them would be easy to sew. One was a uh, drunkard's path with curved piecing and the other was baby blocks. So they oh, were, that's the three-dimensional. Yeah, yeah, so they were all hand-pieced. And, oh, wow. um, and she was uh, really, really intrigued with anything that created an optical illusion and she and I started to kind of fiddle with regular block patterns and we made lots of things with um, squares and triangles. Um, when we moved to Snohomish, Washington in 1982 we found a quilting group there called the Busy Bees of Snohomish and they're still there dabbling in all kinds of cooperative quilting with one another and um, demonstration and education and outreach and charity sewing. Um, but at Busy Bees, it was a cooperative, so you would work on other people's quilts and you would earn points. And when you got 100 points, they would make your quilt design. You'd hand out block packets at the meeting and people would bring them back the next month with their signature embroidered on it. And um, then you would put the top together and invite people to your home or the community center to hand quilt on a frame. Wow. So I have two of those hand quilting frames in my attic, which haven't had a quilt on them in some time. <laughs> um, I still have the quilts? I do, mm -hmm. I do. I didn't bring all those in. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of those quilts. Uh, hand quilting is beautiful uh, and it's uh, and it can be really, really versatile, but my hands with arthritis can't do it anymore. I, we're all the same way. We talk about this a lot with embroidery, um, a lot of the, the decorative stitches on the machines, a lot of the techniques like bobbin works that I do. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people if I can't do it by machine, it doesn't get done. Because we're all kind of in that same boat right now, But and time is an issue as well. It and is. quilting takes a lot of time. So this it, is a way to kind of cut that, cut that shorter. So back in, the, in, in those days, I was very interested in Amish quilting, um, which has 
both um, echoes tradition and modernism. Mm -hmm. Lots of use of negative space, lots of use of solid colors and bright colors, and Roberta Horton had a book called Amish Adventure with lessons in it because she was also a teacher. So I took people through those lessons, and I have three of those pieces. Well, I have more than that. This is a piece I made early on, but never quilted oh. um, until last year. And so this is a, a traditional sunshine and shadow. Let's flip, but the then yeah, let's let's flip, flip it back. over. Yeah, um, show you the back. You can see the quilting on oh the wow. back. Mm -hmm. Is that something? Mm -hmm. And this is all free motion. Um, it is. Mm -hmm. What I did with this was I, um, I practiced in each diagonal line a new stitch pattern that I wanted to try on the half triangle. Mm -hmm. I did um, you know, pebbles and dots or pearls all in this inner border. And then I created a kind of a, a wave. I don't know that it has a name. You know what, though? It's not that far off from McTavishy. It's not. Now, I'm <laughs> looking at it now. I'm thinking yeah. the same thing. Yeah. So some Which other things I did to the front That term will come up it, again later. The <laughs> front of it, as I used um, silk cord and both silk yarn and silk cord, like you would get at a craft stuff mm -hmm. store, um, and I couched those into the seams, into the inner borders, to give it a little bit more fun. texture and fun. And I really love working with this sari silk yarn, so I'll show you some more things I've done with it. But this um, made this piece look more modern, more contemporary, and it hangs on my wall in my sewing room. Yeah, another. Can you grab the pillow? Mm -hmm. The big back rest. Another piece that I had made you in the did 80s. This, yeah, yeah. You just did this recently. I'd made this trip around the world. You can see the color palette is very similar. I'd made this trip around the world, but it was sitting in my box, unfinished. And um, I, during pandemic, when I set up my sewing room, room with the new sewing machine, I found all kinds of things that I didn't even remember I'd made. <laughs> um, so how this g ended up getting used is I had this backrest pillow that looked dreadful, really stained, old, ugly. But my husband likes to sit on it when he sits in the sewing room and watches TV with me. So I took the piece and I, um, I went into the closet and I had a whole bunch of half square oh, triangles. Geez. So here I did improv piecing. Um, I added this section. Um, improv meaning I really didn't have any conscious arrangement of a pattern going on here. I just took the half triangles and sewed them together any which way I liked. And then I added that to uh, this trip around the world and I made one long piece. And then all I did was quilt that in channels, as you can see. And I used a variegated thread so it has a lot of um, color variation in it. A lot of visual texture to it. Yeah. So I just made one long quilt and I, uh, did, after I finished all that half inch uh, parallel line quilting, I said, what next? Okay. So <laughs> I, um, it, it was enough to wrap around the pillow and I needed something for the ends. So here I took some strips of the, the colors and I sewed them together and then I cross cut, sub cut, Re took things apart, did some more improv, mm -hmm. and created these side panels. And then you'll even see here is my welting on the pillow is more of these half square triangles. I had a long strip left and I thought, what the heck, I'm going to make some welting for the pillow mm -hmm. uh, with that. And all of it turned out really well. So how did I put it together? I created one big tube and I stuffed this pillow in, measured out where the corners would be and marked them. And then um, I took the, the pillow back out. And I had I then mapped uh, cut out my pieces to fit on each end. Um, while it was in a tube, and I had left an opening here later for stuffing. Um, while it was in a tube, I pieced in these triangle ends. Now I had a whole three-dimensional piece, and I took that pillow and I jammed it in and crammed it in through an opening here and hand stitched it closed. Now you know what I love about this, other than the fact that it's really fun and really gorgeous. We all have UFOs in our stash. Right? We mm -hmm. all have UFOs in our stash. We, and, and a lot of times, we had one idea for how, to, how we expected that UFO to be finished. But what a great way to repurpose a UFO, okay? You don't have to stand on ceremony. If you have U UFOs in your stash, repurpose them, rethink them. <laughs> if you've got an old quilt, maybe you never finished it, maybe you just have the quilt top. If you have a quilt that maybe you don't like the colors anymore, there's a lot of reasons why we don't finish projects. But what a great way to just repurpose it into something that's now useful. It's going to, you know, live a, li a longer life. And, um, you know, you've honored your history, your heritage, into something that's now very 
functional and, and, fun. and current and fun. So don't stand on ceremony with your UFOs. You know, take them out every now and then. Take a look at them and see if you can think of another way to use them. So just some other pieces that I found in the box when I was making 500 masks during the pandemic. <laughs> I found all? pieces that I Mar forgot Margaret I had. Margaret won the award in our own little mask group, no, I think. I don't think so. <laughs> there was a couple people that I think beat you too, but it was amazing. Um, I had... I had this piece here, this nine patch, double nine patch, mm -hmm. and I had four or five of these little tiny miniatures that I'd made. These were things mm -hmm. I would make for class to show different color combinations. So what this is though, is that I sliced them in half on the diagonal <laughs> and I pieced two similar ones together and practiced quilting on it. And then I used a nubby yarn instead of binding along the edge, applied with a zigzag stitch. And I even used one in an inner border here. And here's another one. This is bars. And I was trying um, some different kinds of quilting. Again, variegated thread. Here is very free-flowing paisley kind of stuff. And here was a, a kind of wonky grid. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to work small so that I wouldn't invest huge amounts of money right. or time in something that I wasn't sure was going to turn out all that great. But again, using up UFOs to practice and to learn and to try and to experiment Again, if it's something small like that, you're never going to use it for anything else anyway. Why not make yeah. something fun out of it like that? Absolutely. So um, so the Amish stuff is sort of where my heart lay years ago yeah. in, in terms of what I was teaching and what I was um, creating. But then came Batik, and I love <laughs> Batik. Batiks and Sopranos, by the way, just so Margaret will tell you, go very, very well together. <laughs> And just so you know, I believe you made your jacket, didn't I, you? I made my jacket in my top. Yep. This, this is um, Rayon Shally. Uh, oh, I have, we, from, I have some of that. From SewBatik.com. Yep, they it's were at the quilt show. Print. Yep, they're I the did. guys at the quilt show. I bought yeah. it at the quilt show, mm -hmm. and it took me a while before I made it up. Yep. I've I got was, some knit, too, that's really pretty. Well, this is a knit colors. top. I am yeah. not real confident sewing knits, mm -hmm. honestly. But that looks I great. Made, I put this outfit together and thought Someone I would wear Someone needs a surgeon. But, yeah. The very last thing I sewed on my Kenmore, uh, second to last thing, was this table runner. And um, you can see I, I used parallel lines in with my walking foot, but I also did some gentle curve wavy lines mm -hmm. with the walking foot. And um, I was real happy with this project, but my thread kept breaking. And at this point, as I'm trying to push my Kenmore into curvy lines, I am finding, wow, it is just, maybe not the thing that this machine was designed to do. So though it was a workhorse, I um, was starting to think about having something else. So along came time I bought the Soprano. And this is the very first quilt that I made. With this it. was Elizabeth's, isn't it? This belongs to my daughter. Mm -hmm. I made it for her for graduation to take to college. She did, doesn't just have just it at college. Three, I was just gonna say, it was, it was just about three years ago, by yeah. the So um, this, this um, quilt is based on a class taught on Craftsy by uh, Christina Camelli, and it is, oh, I don't remember the name of the class, but it's basically it's five fabrics I picked, three block designs, and then when you work on it, you're working on a sampler of many different free motion stitches. This was so helpful to me because it, it was very forgiving. I remember when, when you did this, you brought this in to show me. And, it, and I love this because like you said, every single block, like you can see it best I think on these darker fabrics. Like right here, I love this one. It's kind of a snail trail right here. Here you've got some circles going on. Here you have some, kind of a pebble, but it fills in. Ovals, yeah. Ovals, kind of, yeah. here's some um, here's a flower. echo kind of quilting. Here's a really pretty free motion one. There's a flower. So I remember when this, when she was working on this quilt and I, I just remember thinking, wow, you're what, a beginner? Say yeah. what? <laughs> I had the machine about three months at this yeah. point. And we work and we turn it over. It is pieced quilt as yep. you go. So oh, I also I had to look up a Leah Day video and learn how to do the double binding. Mm -hmm. um, this was a much better method than the first quilt as you go project I made. Yeah. Um, and Leah Day is on YouTube. To we love Leah yeah. Day's videos. She's fabulous. So I remember seeing this and thinking, I'm so glad you bought that machine. <laughs> well, uh, well only because of what you were accomplishing with it. More, more than quickly. that. Let me let me say more about the machine mm -hmm. because in Christina's class, she's got this is the block, okay? Mm -hmm. But I added a border around it, and then on I have three different fabrics within the quilt for that border. 
what I did was I played with the built-in stitches on the Soprano. It has six or eight stitches that will go two inches wide because mm -hmm. it not only has forward and backward feed dogs, it has lateral feed dogs. Mm -hmm. This blew my mind. I thought, well, if I never master free milk and quilting, at least I have a stitch on here that I can use. Absolutely. So this is a candy ribbon stitch. And I just sat there at the machine and I all, well, what, 15 blocks, and I mm -hmm. just stitched that candy ribbon stitch without giving it another mm -hmm. thought and thinking just to make my blocks bigger and to give it a consistent look. And I'm really happy with how it looks. That was a great... So let, let me ask you a question. You were coming from a, a, uh, a mechanical Kenmore mm -hmm. to an electronic mm -hmm. machine here. And there's a huge difference in how these machines feed. Did you find it easy to kind of trans transition to that let the machine do it, or did you kind of have to fight that a little bit and teach yourself that? Well, when you were giving me some instruction, yes, I had to fight yeah. myself because I was used to kind of feeding yeah. mine through on the Kenmore, helping yeah. it along, and the Soprano doesn't need that help at yeah. all. Yeah, and that, that's one of the things I think that people going from mechanical to electronic, doing all the one-on-one -on -one lessons that I find is the most important to teach them. So you, it, it obviously didn't take you long to figure out, let the machine do the work and I'll have the fun, right? <laughs> so um, so this has got 15 blocks in it and mm -hmm. um, it was really great to learn free motion quilting on something this size mm -hmm. because I could turn it any way I wanted or needed to. I could manage the bulk very easily. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't you know, it was not a big disaster if I had right. a mistake. I soon found out that my mistakes were not going to be seen anyway. Yeah. Only I would know about them. <laughs> exactly. And so um, I also used a gray thread that really blends in. Mm -hmm. So did you use the gray on all the all the colors? I did. I yeah, used so gray on everything. everything. Mm -hmm. I think the one of the things that was hard for me at first, and I'm still getting used to it, is when when you want to hide any imperfections, you might choose a blending thread. But while you're stitching it, you can't see what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> That's like black thread on a black fabric. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't see very well what you're doing. So mm -hmm. I would practice a lot of these stitches on practice sandwiches. I have a whole pile of them. Where did I throw them here? Oh, and also, uh, let's not forget these. Let's not forget these. Oh, we won't. Um, <laughs> how are we doing on time? We're good. Right, we're good. good. So, um, practice sandwiches, any old thing that you decided isn't going to have a future in a quilt, any scrap of fabric, you get it out, you put, a, make a sandwich out of it, and you practice. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is some of my very early work. And this is nothing I would normally show to anyone other than to say, this is a good way to check your tension. I can see I had some eyelashing going on here, so I needed to adjust my top tension. Mm -hmm. um, I can see uh, lots of patterns I stitch over top of each other. I've even at some points thrown another piece of fabric on and just started over mm -hmm. on the same quilt batting. And, uh, and every single um, experienced free motion quilter that I have ever talked to says the exact same thing. You need a practice piece. Yeah. You need to warm up. Well, warming you need up. To, and warming up. And you, and you need to practice your pattern before you take it to your to your piece. So let's talk about that for just a minute yeah. because um, I have my sketchbook. Yes. Where did it go? Um, is it underneath over there? There's some patterns underneath. It's underneath. There. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So when I was getting started, I had here I have a graph paper composition book. Only graph paper because I happen to have one in the house left over from a child's school supply, and then I thought that would be good for graphing um, portable for graphing out designs that I might want to do with layouts of quilts. Mm -hmm. um, also, I was planning my sewing room and getting new furniture, so I drafted out my room and mm -hmm. tried lots of different things about to decide what kind of sewing tables I was going to add in there. But in this notebook, what I did is I started to practice designs that I was studying in free motion quilting books and from videos from some of my favorite designers. And the, some of those designers are Leah Day, Christina Camelli, Angela Walters. Angela Walters is great because she always says, um, finish is better than not, you know? <laughs> That's and true. she has the Midnight <laughs> Quilter Show and lots of other features that she does. Um, finish is better than not. And, and all of these people made me feel a lot more confident about trying. So in this book, I would just, with a, a rollerball pen that would roll smoothly, I would just practice different ideas. Some are good ideas. I'd sometimes note what page number I got an idea from that I was trying. Mm -hmm. Some are good ideas, some are not so good. Some make it into quilts, some don't because I'm not ready yet. One of the designs I really, this is actually a pretty good meander page, but mm -hmm. I don't like meander. 
I really I, don't, I do a different one. I don't do that one either. I don't do I don't feel like I do it well, so I don't do it. I have other things that I feel I do better. Yeah. So I would say if you're starting out, yeah. two things that that you might really have to practice on if you are determined to use them is you'll have to practice your meander mm -hmm. and you'll have to practice feathers. Yes. Um, other than that, the rest of it can come pretty easily. Easily. Um, I've taken this meander now and I've adapted it by adding loops. I allow That's my thread line to cross and That's I have I a loop-de-loop -loop loop loop meander and it's so much more fun and easier to do and I just focus on spacing. That's what I do. That's what so I do. And I, I think what's really important about this, and this is one of the things that I tell you when I'm giving you a one-on-one -on -one instruction on your machines and what our quilting teacher Jenny DeRussia also talks about and, and you've taken Jenny's class. It's coming mm -hmm. up again this week. Don't even try. It's already filled. Um, but she will do it again. But practicing your patterns. You can oh, see drawing them. That's one of my original designs. There you go. Because is I'm a musician. The, is this the I thought, one? This is the, uh, the clef. The clef one. I'm thinking, yeah. I'm a musician. At some mm -hmm. point, I'm going to put what, this into one of my quilts. Mm -hmm. And so I drafted those um, clefs, and then I started doing things around them. I thought, oh, that's kind of, that'll be fun. I have, haven't done it yet, but. You will. I will. But, but this is. You the see how I'm that, practicing them? There you go. And the thing about practicing with a pencil is that it's the same muscle memory as when you get yeah. to your machine. It's similar. I won't say it's identical, but it's similar enough that if you practice your pattern on paper, when you get to your machine, you'll have the confidence and you'll be able to relax and actually create that pattern yeah. more easily. I actually... Um, <gasps> Ooh, I like that one. This was a mandala idea. I was practicing for the center of a quilt that I made for my nephew's That's wedding. That's a lot of stitches. <laughs> um, it is. I did yeah. end up creating a kind of um, really a pretty. compass rose mandala. That's beautiful. And then I added other things to fill in. But this one... One, you can see I'm trying different re repeating ideas around mm -hmm. it to see what I like. I actually prefer working with a rollerball pen over mm -hmm. a pencil because there's a drag on a pencil. Yes. And the rollerball ball, uh, yes. flows more easily. And I love a sharp, bright, dark, or really bright yeah. black line. Here, here's some of my latest experiments. I'm working on drafting feathers. I've been practicing feathers for almost three years now. I'm getting better at it. And um, here, here's one I doodled while I was watching TV the other night learning to fill in around corners and um, just fill all the space. If any of you do Zentangles, this is very similar to Zentangling also. Then, you know, then I just mm -hmm. divided this into eight sections. That's a and Zentangle I, page. Yeah, <laughs> and I just started playing with different ideas mm -hmm. that I've been working on. Here's motorcycle flames, here's McTavishing. Mm -hmm. This is a leaf design I'm not crazy about. Okay, and, so we mentioned but, McTavishing twice, so talk about McTavishing real quick. Jenny DeRussia in, uh, introduced me to McTavishing years ago, but uh, you just yeah. got to learn what it is, so talk about what I it is. I just well. stumbled across Karen McTavish a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it turns out as I go and study her work is that there are lots of her quilts that I've seen before that mm -hmm. I love. Yeah. Um, her textural designs add a lot of interest to quilts. And uh, what she does is she creates a, a, an S shape and then she echoes it four times. And then she goes off in a new direction and echoes it four times. And then she starts filling in with C shaped curves and or pebbles. And this is uh, typical of a McTavish design. Um, I have a practice sandwich down there I'll yeah. show. And then here's, an, here's another one. This is all swirls. It starts with just um, a vine. And you each time you curl on the vine and make a spiral, mm -hmm. you go the opposite direction you went before. And, I, I find and then her, you start yeah, filling just, in. I find her, her particular approach to free motion quilting to be very organic and actually mm -hmm. surprisingly easy to follow. Because it's another one of those sort of um, patterns or, or methods of free motion quilting that is very, very forgiving. And you never really get lost in it because you can always kind of start off on another direction. I've lost track of all. The, oh, here's That's it. Here That's is it. Yeah. after watching one video of Karen's. This is my McTavish practice sandwich, and all I did was draw the initial curved line of the different um, S shapes, and everything else I did freehand or free guided, mm -hmm. without much thought at all. It's very sort of mindful. It is. And that's one of the things I enjoy doing about it, with it, is that the mindfulness and the getting away from the media, mm -hmm. getting away from school, and all yep. of the and interruptions. Yep, that all that. Now, so I'm just going to kind of interrupt just for a second, just to say, I think a lot of people think that free, that don't do it, think that free motion quilting is a very, both random and impulsive 
um, activity that people just sit down and start doing it and I think that you can see by how far we've gotten now with Margaret's journey it's the anything but that true free motion quilters think about their project they plan their project they practice their project and by the time they get to their project they have a very clear idea of what they're going to do and that doesn't mean that they're still not in charge of moving that fabric and creating that pattern yeah. as opposed to the feed dogs doing it but there's there this is what true free motion quilters this is the journey is, is what you're seeing what here. I like to do um, particularly on my larger quilts is decide on one element I want to plan mm -hmm one thing that I know is a given and then I fill in in the background as it suits me. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily plan the whole thing and sometimes there's some stop and starting involved mm -hmm. in getting there but I do um, I do try to have some idea for example and, and then I practice these not just sketching here but I love to put things inside of sleeves. I have some to show for example. There's a quilt on the mm -hmm. table here that You're is, gonna see this oh, in a minute. You're gonna be blown away yeah. by this one. So these are some color prints of the quilt pattern. This is the thistle pattern by Angela Walters. It was a kit originally, and then I needed to make it bigger, so I bought more fabric that was similar in color, and I made a very large quilt. It's mm -hmm. king size. And what I did was I tried out different ideas. This is dry erase pen on a plastic sleeve with a color picture slid inside. If I like something but I'm still experimenting, I'll photograph it, then I'll erase and start over. And whatever I end up with is most likely something I want to pursue. I'll stop and I'll pin it on my design board when I get to it. Because I, I played with these in July, but I didn't start quilting this quilt till January. Yeah. So and that was last year, I think you started quilting it, right? Or did you quilt this this year? I, this, this one you just two finished, Two months right? ago. Yeah, yeah I did it in January. Um, and it's the, the wedding is this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in luck in that we get to see the quilts before the bride. And her mother. And her mother. <laughs> As opposed to, it, it's already gone, so I'm, I'm thrilled that yeah, you were able to bring this one The other wedding with. quilts, I, yeah. I bought a Dream Big panel here, and mm -hmm. I, I bought it just for practice. And that's another thing to say is when you get more confident, try a panel. Mm -hmm. Something Absolutely. that's about 40 inches square. Yep. Try a panel and um, and try out some of your ideas on it, Absolutely. and it's manageable. And we've, we've had the dream panel here. I don't know if we have any right now, but that's that big, giant flower on a panel with all the different colors yeah. that you can do different things I with. I bought one here, yeah. and I didn't know what I wanted to do with it, mm -hmm. and then one day it hit me that it went pretty well with a kit that I had in, um, in storage, mm -hmm. and I made it the centerpiece of a much larger quilt. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about managing projects. Mm -hmm. um, this was really, this was my first project and it was really manageable because I was dealing with 14 inch squares. Mm -hmm. And um, so, even- So visually, mentally, it was, this is all I need to worry about right now. Right, even yeah. the borders, I did, um, I did the borders in, I think they were double wide and I had bisected them in lots of different mm -hmm. organic shapes and tried different patterns. And then I just sliced it in half and I added one to each side. So I was kind of, so you quilted the border before you put it on? Oh yeah, because oh, we're yeah. doing the quilt as a go. Yeah. So you basically did the whole thing and then just cut it apart and did and put it on. Yeah. That's awesome. And then, um, then I added. Talk about quick and dirty and get it done. <laughs> All yep. right. Where is it? Then I added a label. It just seems to be on every every corner that I'm not looking at. Exactly. There it is. Added a label for my daughter, and I used some of the um, lettering stitching in the Soprano machine to put her initials on mm -hmm. it and um, added that to the back of the quilt. And I think labeling quilts is really important because if you ever go to a quilt museum or a, a, mu a textile museum, there are thousands of quilts out there that have no history. We don't know where they came from. We don't know who made them. We don't know what happened to them or how they got where they are because they're not labeled. So this is, I think, a fairly modern um, development in the quilting world is labeling our quilts. We now know. can. Well, we, we consider these pieces of art, whereas 100 years ago they were they were some art pieces, but well, most of your quilts were not. You go to the Virginia yeah. Quilt Museum. Are they there, labeled? There's a, there's a quilt there that has an entire, um, and I'm trying to remember what the subject of it. It has an entire text stitched around in it? all around it. Sometimes you'd find on Baltimore album quilts, uh -huh. for example, you'd find them. And that's an art quilt. That is the, truly yeah, an art quilt. You'd have the... Um, mm -hmm the like makers, a wedding. the different, it would have, yeah. it would be inked in mm -hmm. or maybe hand stitched in. So I want to show you what I did with yeah. this most recent quilt. So, so label your quilts, ladies. We want to know what, where they came from a hundred years from now. Ah. All right. Here All right. Go. This is a monster. This is a monster. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to open the whole okay. thing up. We're going to try. Uh, but I have to look for, okay. Here it is. Here it is. So this quilt is not only labeled uh, with m my label that I ordered from Etsy, 
that says who made it. I've, I've put the date on it too, 2022. Mm -hmm. But in the... You've got the hanger on there too. The hanger corner? Oh, that that's that's not a hanger corner, that's but just that's how you the same... The same just, uh, okay, yeah. let me help you. Help me with here. Okay, here are the name of the bride and groom are stitched into the border. I used slightly darker thread so it would stand out. And it's got their wedding date and the city and state where they're getting married. And then you've got some, you got some, looks like some Bible verses. I did. Mm -hmm. I asked Lydia um, what was her favorite uh, Bible verse about marriage. And she said she didn't have one, but Sam had one. Um, and so I used his, and I think, is this um, one here? John 4, 16. That's, yeah, it's, his is, I think, Ecclesiastes. Anyway, um, I started be, looking up. Yeah, I started That's looking up one. verses, and on the entire blue border um, has scripture about marriage and Col love. Colossians is on this Col one. Yeah. Um, Colossians three fourteen, and over all of these virtues, and I won't read the whole thing, but. <laughs> So, um, so that's this wonderful. Is, this is really meaningful for them because they're getting married in a, uh, a church camp retreat center where the, where his family has volunteered for years. Um, there's a very faith filled relationship, and I know they're going to really love this. They're going to love this. It. So, just a couple things. One is yes, you can free motion quilt text, which I think is awesome. And I learned that in my class here. Yeah. I but what I also want to know, though, this I think you told me is one oh two by 103 or something like that by 103. Yeah, it's like 104 inches square. How did you quilt this on a machine <laughs> with an 8 inch throat? I mean, seriously. Okay. This is an amazing quilt. It's a king size quilt that she did. She did not do this on a long arm. She did this on her soprano machine and she free motion quilted the whole thing. Okay. And it so took her about I used a variety of techniques. Two months. You just finished this one, I think, not too long ago. Um, the first thing I did I wanted to stabilize. Can you see it from here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wanted to stabilize a lot of it. So I start in the center, just as any quilter on a rack mm -hmm. would, would start mm -hmm. in the center and I work my way out. So I started with my walking foot and mm -hmm. I put in all of these parallel you can see diagonal right here. lines. Mm -hmm. They're here and here. They're here and here. So they're going in both directions. Yeah. So I put in all of those and what that did was that really um, kept everything and, and this is uh, basted with basting spray and also because quilting used to be a communal event mm -hmm. a communal a social event, event. Um, Absolutely. the pandemic has made it really hard for quilters because basting something this size by yourself is a real challenge yeah where so did you do it where did you I did it? it I based it in my front yard with the pool noodle <laughs> I used the pool noodle method so did I had you just said something about a pool noodle <laughs> well, before that she basted this quilt in her front yard I, I did with a little basting spray, she laid it out in her front yard That's in order to hilarious. base it. That I did hilarious. three that day <laughs> uh, because I had two wedding quilts and one for me. All of them were about a hundred inches square. So I had, I bought some pool noodles and some PVC pipe just to link them mm -hmm. together and strengthen them. And then I put out two long tables in the front yard and I draped it over with a drop cloth of plastic. And then you're using that adhesive spray and it gets on everything. So That's I really, true. I didn't want to breathe it and I didn't want it to get on the quilt on the outside of the quilt. So as I'm rolling this together, it's dropping off onto clean plastic. Oh wow, so that's insane. Girl, more energy than I and how come nobody was there to videotape you doing this? Because I, I would love to see a videotape. I bet your neighbors were having a good time watching. Uh, one of my neighbors <laughs> drove by and asked, uh, looked very puzzled about what I was doing. Um, <laughs> but what I did is I, 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 I was, uh, pressed the whole backing and I rolled it on a pool noodle and mm -hmm. I, I pinned it to the noodle and roll it. And then yeah. I, I, I tumbled with a damp towel, I tumbled my batting in the dryer mm -hmm. to get the creases out of it, mm -hmm. and then I pinned that to a pool noodle and I rolled it up, and then I pressed and starched this top, and I did the same thing, and then I have the three on the, uh, on the table, one, two, three, and I am rolling them out and creating a sandwich and smoothing as I wow. go with wow. the spray adhesive. So um, that is how that happened. And so naturally, anything that I, I uh, use spray adhesive with, I'm usually going to wash it before I give it. Mm -hmm. um, this time I think I'm, I'm going to skip that step and yeah, just ask them to wash it and yeah. give them good instructions. Okay, so, so we so were talking about yeah. stabilizing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got all my diagonal lines in mm -hmm. and while um, later I came back uh, at, with free motion and I just did um, little curving lines from corner to corner on these blue uh, squares. I used templates to um, and a 
key erasable pen to mark in feathers in here because I had a great template that fit in those corners and I mm -hmm. wasn't as confident with feathers yet mm -hmm. when I was there. doing this, mm -hmm. um, but the template would make sure that I would follow the line and do a really good job. So I did that and then um, I pondered, you know, so there was all these yellow squares to do and all of these triangles to do and so I keep working from the center on out mm -hmm. and um, puddling the quilt. I have a big table. Um, it has, I think, four feet that go, three or four feet to go off to the left, a couple feet that go off to the right. I have a table um, that lifts up in the back mm -hmm. and I can shift it and then I get my light up there. Mm -hmm. And then I stick another four foot plastic table off to my left and then it can hold the weight of the quilt. Yeah. Some people like to use an overhead system with mm -hmm. bungee cords and clamps. Yeah. And we've lift, had and we've had a quilt. we've had a frame thing. It's like a this lightweight plastic frame thingy mm -hmm. that holds your holds your quilt up. I can't remember what that was called, but we have had those before too. So yeah. uh, when it, I make the backing, yes. weightless yeah. Yeah. Connie Barfell would like to know if you had the quilt rolled on pool no pool noodles as you were quilting. No. Okay. Once I had rolled it on pool noodles, um, uh, once I had unrolled it and spray basted it, I did three quilts the day that I did that. And I took every one of them and folded them up nicely and I put them in a bag to wait until I had time to quilt. Because I did, I rolled this in July mm -hmm. and I quilted it in January. When I took it out in January, I got out my I got it on my big board ironing board that I've made and I pressed both the front and the back and smoothed out all the creases because as it's sitting in the closet yeah. it's creased and things shift a little bit so I, I ironed it both front and back to smooth out all the creases and then what I did is I, I was just about to say this I have about oh, four to six inches of extra width on each edge of the quilt when it is um, in process mm -hmm. and I fold that over and I safety pin those down so that I have a soft secure edge I don't want to get caught mm -hmm. um, I don't want to get caught under or over or in a pin so I have a nice soft rolled edge with a safety pin all the way around and then I'm just really um, puddling it and working and completing as much of one area as possible but I think with this quilt I did end up doing all the feathers I did all of the diagonals and I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do in these stars here and I um, tried and, and so at this point I I hadn't planned what I wanted to do yeah. so I got out some vinyl plastic and laid it over top of the quilt mm -hmm. and we have that product here by the way and did you have this then I didn't what I had well, we what, have this now <laughs> what I had was an old vinyl shower curtain that had been run through the washer I wanted something big and I laid it out on top and with my dry erase pens I tried different idea, mm -hmm. ideas and uh, once I decided what I wanted to do I did some dot to dot ruler quilting in here um, to make those stars burst and Which I was I happy that. with that. Because I love the straight lines here kind of mimic the these lines here mm -hmm. and you got the curves here mim mimicking the curves here so it's a beautiful um, amalgam of your curves and your straight lines to, to really to make that beautiful. Yeah, when I started this, the only thing I was pattern. really sure I wanted to do was I wanted to create these diagonal lines mm -hmm. along these um, chains of blue mm -hmm. squares. That was the only thing I had absolutely decided I was well, going to do. And the rest of it started filling in. And then so um, I just got some of this. I've not opened it yet. This is called Quilter's Preview Paper, and it is not paper at all. It's a roll of plastic. It's 20 inches wide by 25 feet long. So this is going to give me some really nice big mm -hmm. um, areas that I can work on on my next project. And I'm excited we are about we are going to order some in here, so we will have this product. Yeah, okay. I, I think this is really great. So I can work on small um, uh, sheet protectors for ideas. Mm -hmm. I can use my sketchbook, but when you get down to the quilt and you still haven't decided and you mm -hmm. need to see things in scale, this is going to be really really handy. And, and again, I mean, you're talking a king size quilt, and you broke it down to manageable pieces. It's like so many things in our life. Mm -hmm. You know, this could be easily be overwhelming to someone to try to even think about where am I going to start. So you broke it down into manageable pieces, starting with what you absolutely knew, which was the 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 um, mm -hmm. straight line. Let's tack it all down. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure I want to do this. Let's try it. Okay, that works. We're going to finish that. And so you really worked from what I know I want to do to what I think I want to do, to I have no idea, but let's figure it out. And so I love that. It's as, a process. As I got to the outer edges... Um, Can we talk your bike too? 
<laughs> well, yeah, we can talk about the binding. Um, as I got to the outer edges, I just did a simple squiggle in the gold. Mm -hmm. I did. I added the scripture in the blue. At this point, I was getting tired, and I just didn't want to think a whole lot about the border. So what I did, um, I did something a little bit different that I'd not tried before. I divided my border into triangles, mm -hmm. and then I filled it with lazy eights. There you go. And now, that um, was super fast and didn't require turning anything around. Okay, so another question for you. So you did this with your walking foot, the straight part, mm -hmm. but within the body of the quilt, the actual free motion part are small elements. When you get to something like this that's an ongoing pattern and as you have to move your quilt, how do you save your spot? Did you keep it with your needle down in the fabric and then just kind of shifted everything or did you just kind of go for it? I kind of went for it. The <laughs> only thing I planned was at my corners. Um, mm -hmm. I, I planned in my corners to end at the seam line, which was mm -hmm. mitered. Yep. And so I just started in that corner and then I just squiggled. Because this is all down the border, mm -hmm. I am not having to move a lot of bulk. Um, right. Most of the bulk is off to my left and sit, piled up on the table. Mm -hmm. and you know, the only complication might be the cat shows up and tries to get into the machine. <laughs> yeah, because we all we all have kitty cat feline yeah. friends that, cat that like help. help us. <laughs> so then I'm just I'm just moving on mm -hmm. down through the yep. whole length of the border. Then I pick the whole quilt up and rotate it 90 degrees, and, and I do the next side keep and keep going. So, so that's how this one finished up. I filled in in between the scriptures with mm -hmm. some free motion leafy vines. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun really and fun. easy to do. And um, then you want me to talk about my binding? Yeah, just okay. real quick that you that you did put the piping in the binding. Susan Cleveland teaches a class on Craftsy and has a, and sells a book and a tool mm -hmm. called Pipe and Hot, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and she talks about how you can do really fantastic edges. Mm -hmm. The one I like the best is adding this little piping in. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And so this is a really thin polyester cord like you would have on a blind, on a mm -hmm. cellular blind or mm -hmm. a mini blind and you can buy that in any kind of drapery mm -hmm. um, supplies um, really thin cord and then I cut my I cut one and a half inch on the bias mm -hmm. I have ordered a special foot from uh, um, baby lock for this it's called a mini piping, mini piping le left mm -hmm. mini piping left mm -hmm. and then I run this great through the machine foot. it's a great foot it really holds the cord in place and then so I, I have created the cord I wrap a card with it mm -hmm. by the way one of the tips I do when I'm working on a project is I like to make my binding before I start the quilt really I make the binding and I wrap a card and I make the piping and I wrap a card mm -hmm. and when I get tired and I'm at the, at the end and I'm on the home stretch mm -hmm. I don't have to stop and make something again oh that's a great I that's a great just tip. ready to put it on that is a great great tip um so I don't know if you can get in close on this um the uh, my favorite stitch for putting on the binding is this wavy zigzag mm -hmm. I think um I can't that's another one of those decorative stitches it's one of the decorative stitches on mm -hmm. the on the baby lock soprano I really like it it is it puts a lot of stitching into the binding so it is not going to come loose yeah. and I'm not good yet at doing the straight stitch finish I don't that's think the professional is. finish and I, I like this this is, is. fun <laughs> mm -hmm. there's a stray thread but um, I, I love it I love a fancy stitch on a binding yeah. because I'm with you because it hides a lot like you say hides a lot of boo-boos it's very forgiving and all that so, so we are getting a little close on time so I want to talk about your collage quilts okay because I trust me, we could stand here for three hours, yeah, easily talking about Margaret and her. Here in Joyful asks if that was the serpentine. About the what? If that was the serpentines. Yeah, it's one of them. There's yeah. a couple built in, but yes. Okay, so um, all of the quilts you see on the table, I, I won't talk about them individually, but uh, these are all throws that we made mm -hmm. in our house. This, except this is a crib quilt for a baby, and I uh, have a couple table yep. runners. But these are all throws in my house, and my husband keeps saying every time I get out a new quilt, what are you quilting that for? <laughs> well, Because we can. Because <laughs> we, we can. This is my one and only experiment into foundation paper piecing. Oh, cool. And um, Is this your last one also? <laughs> uh, I, I don't I, know if I have. I made a Mariner Star uh, pillow for my in-laws once, and it was both my first and last Mariner Star. <laughs> I appreciated. I appreciated the precision in this. Yeah. I was really super happy with the precision of yeah. the acute angles. Yeah. But it hung on my wall for a long time before I quilted it because I just, you know, I didn't know if I'm at the end of this. And I yeah. actually have a friend who wants wants to commission a piece from me. Um, I've never done that before, but wants to commission a piece from me based on this pattern for his office, and I have not started it. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, so this is one of Margaret's little bit newer um, adventures, shall we say. 
and these collage quilts. And okay. how long have you been doing these? About a year. Um, these, you guys, you think you've seen it? You haven't seen nothing yet. <sighs> All right. This is my first piece. This is Cardinals. Cute. Now, kind of explain what collage uh, quilting is. I am. Can yeah. you give me my design board? Yes. Design board is this one. Oh, yeah. perfect. This is the perfect explanation. Yes. Yeah. Um, right there. So, I discovered another quilter who I was really admiring her portraiture and animals and wildlife and mm -hmm. things. Um, and her name is Emily Taylor. And she owns a, build, a business called The Collage Quilter. She has a Facebook page and the Collage Quilter Academy. In the Academy Facebook group, you can use anything you make with one of her patterns. You can ask questions and, and, uh, and uh, get advice from one another. And it's really great to see how all these cardinals come out differently mm -hmm. with different people. It is amazing. Uh, th this cardinal was a pattern that was offered that winter. I think it was about a $15 download, digital sure. download. And so here it, it gave me the pattern for the cardinal and the branches. Um, and then I have lots of cardinals in my yard, so I really wanted to have a, a lady cardinal as well. I took the pattern, I reversed it, I changed the tail angle, I did a couple of things. It's pretty similar, but mostly really a mirror image. Mm -hmm. And then I used different fabrics. So what this is, is this involves a layering of elements that are fused with steam seam light too. And this, um, this Love was my first color. project, so it's yeah. very, very thick. Yeah. I did not, um, I did not know how I was going to quilt this. So actually, I took the birds and I quilted them first before I put them on. But you, the you know back. what? They ha it has almost a trapunto look to it. Yeah. I really like that. Yes. It, they, you get these nice, nice plump cardinals, and I really, really like the, the feel of it. The background I chose. I auditioned a lot of fabrics. I didn't like any of them, um, but I had made this monochromatic bargello piece as an experiment and mm -hmm. a kind of an art quilt le uh, lesson about color value and it had been hanging around on my wall and I didn't know what I was going to do with it. So um, I one day I thought maybe I wonder what it would look if the Cardinals had this piece behind it and then it just came to life. And so they are winter Cardinals. My husband wants me to make some for the summer as well and um, I use uh, lots of batiks and again I've added um, some silk cord in the uh, border ditch mm -hmm. for a, a little mini frame and I actually bound this piece with silk cord and um, let's flip it over you can see on oh you can't see I used a print on the back I, none of these cardinals are quilted on the back because mm -hmm. I quilted them individually and then I fused them to the background Put that back again real quick and show that hanging method. We were talking yeah. about that earlier today. So this is a really great hanging method for small pieces is to put triangular pockets in the corner and you're um, adding those on, you're stitching those on um, before you bind. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you, um, I brought one piece. It's a coffee cup, I think. Yeah. yeah. Here it is. This is oh. how I've been hanging all my small pieces at home with just a wooden slat and command hook Velcro. Mm -hmm. I literally, I stick this on the, on the slat and then I peel this off and stick it on the wall and level it, you know, and then it's good. It hangs really straight and flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's super lightweight. And if I'm shipping it somewhere, I can just pop it out. Oh, and goodness. this morning when I pulled all these, there's all these sticks on my wall <laughs> <laughs> um, where things are missing. And again, you see I labeled. Yeah all my pieces. Okay. So, right. so back to our process. Okay. So the cardinals I made first and um, my sister uh, saw a picture of it and she said she thought this was the prettiest quilt that I had ever made in our whole life. <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, it was kind of fun. Let me try some more. So just exactly a year ago, I made this piece. This is my favorite. This is another download mm -hmm. I, I bought from Emily Taylor and it's the orange uh, tree. And um, her pattern was too large for the space where I wanted to hang it, mm -hmm. so I took the digital pattern and I shrank it on my photocopier <laughs> mm -hmm. and put it back together to make it the size that I need it to be. Now, I know that the, the leaves and the oranges are all pieced. Is the vase also a bunch of different fabrics that yep. are pieced? So yep. look how beautiful that the, is. The I vase, love um, I love chinoiserie. Um, I have lots and lots of blue and white fabric in my stash, and I just... Um, created this and, and I was trying to get here's the direction of the light you can see I was really working with color value mm -hmm. in the top of the orange tree 
And a lot of these leaves in the bottom are not really even green. There's some of them are purple, and mm -hmm. there are other shadowy colors. And I used a dark red thread mm -hmm. to quilt them to give them more texture, more color. Um, again, the light is sitting here, so my lighter colors are here, my darker colors are down below, and I attempted a shadow. And eventually, um, I, you know, I'm working on this, and eventually I'm going to decide a background. So you might want to know, how am I working on this? Well, what I'm doing, here's a piece that I have not finished. I have a, uh, I trace the pattern that I get from Emily or one that I'm making my own on ordinary kitchen parchment paper. And then what I'm doing is I'm cutting out pieces of fabric that I have added steam to steam light to, to the back of. And I am, they, they, they're a little tacky and I'm sticking them down. I can move That's them around. That's why I love that product is because it's got the stick as well as the, as well as the iron on. Yeah. Um, you can move things until you're ready to iron them down. So I'm assembling the picture and I'm actually I'm assembling it on the parchment and I'm going to show you see the whole thing is just sticky mm -hmm. on the back um, I'm assembling it on the parchment paper and so that's what I did with this orange tree I made the whole top of the orange tree on parchment paper I made the base on another piece of parchment paper and then um, and they and I can store them flat that way too mm -hmm. for as long as I need to if I don't like where something ended up I can heat it up get it with my tweezers, move it, stick it back down. Yep. And all of this, if you lightly steam it, it'll stay there and you can manipulate and play with it for quite a mm -hmm. while. Or even just tip, like your, the tip of your iron on the middle of the piece so that yeah. it's just tacked down there. Yeah. Then, so you're working on this whole thing on parchment paper and it's very easy to pick up and store, whatever, and I made myself a design board so I could work vertically. Um, this is simply a piece of foam core, extra thick foam core, and I put a fleece sleeve made it basically a pillowcase and I put a fleece sleeve on it and so I can I can do all kinds of things and base I can pin into this but this is really way a good way for me to have a portable design board to, to work from when I'm creating these designs so and then you this also was like here need this too? yeah and yeah. so the other thing is I this is my wool um, and again we love these. Ironing pad. And would you mm -hmm. grab my little tiny mini iron back there? Oh, it was hanging. Yeah. Look at all the goodies over here. <laughs> so when you're, when you're first creating your collage, you are not sewing anything. You are doing lots of cutting and you're playing with color and value and trying and shapes and trying to create your picture. Um, I've, I've kind of, I'm comfortable now with still life. But I really would love to make a pet portrait. Uh -huh. um, uh, yeah. Like I have Your beautiful cats, yeah. you know, and Your my sister-in-law just got a new um, stallion. And really? Yeah. That and would be gorgeous. He, the face. He flew in from Spain. Wow. And um, I've seen pictures, and he's gorgeous. Uh, so pet portraits is another thing, but lots of you can just really make any kind of pictorial quilt this way, and you're not sewing anything until you're ready to create texture in the quilt sandwich. Um, this little tool. This is a mini iron. Um, and I use this tool while I'm working with the collage. I might hold, put something in place mm -hmm. and tack it down, come back to it later. Or maybe now I want to move it, I got to heat it up, pull it out, and move it somewhere. This little tool is a pretty essential part of this. And, and that's one of those craft. tools that a lot of us have stashed in a drawer somewhere. I had to buy one, but. Yeah, dig it yeah. out of the drawer, ladies, if you want to do collages. Um, so, and, and that's why I have this nice wool pad is that this yeah. is portable. I can take it somewhere else in my house, work in the window, um, you know, wherever I want to. This, actually, this collage makes a huge mess because you're snip, snip, snipping. <laughs> it's like paper craft. It's everywhere all over the room, and you haven't sewn a stitch until you're done creating your mm -hmm. picture. And then what I did is I, ha I had, um, I made, I made the orange tree, and then I made two I've pieces to go with it. I love these hang, these three hang in my kitchen. I love these. And <laughs> I know, aren't they gorgeous? I'll teach you I how to just, make them. We're, yeah, we're trying um, to talk her into a class. Oh, yeah. so the pattern. I, I can't so remember. I bought the lemon. I don't remember. Right. I think the lemon pattern was separate from the orange pattern, but the lemon pattern also had this plum variation. And then I made the bowls. Just mm -hmm. I made them up. I made this in a basket. I wove some strips together, and then I mm -hmm. um, did the same sort of treatment around a handle for the basket. And wasn't this the one that you had a couple of different versions down here? And we had a dark 
container and I, I think every, and, we, and I love it Margaret posts all of her stuff on Facebook and yes we all comment so <laughs> and I yes. think the consensus was that the light color I, worked better on that I've lost track of all the things I brought today I yeah. do have that other basket I had a purple basket at yeah. one point so mm -hmm. um, Margaret tell them your Facebook page so they can join up with you <laughs> Maybe I need to set up a quilting one. Yeah. But yeah, my, my page is uh, Margaret Duncan Storty. And it's just my personal page. Yeah. So maybe I'll set up a, a yeah. quilting one. Yeah, tag yourself in the comments. And tag yourself in the comments. comments. There you go. Yeah. And then so here, here's something that I think you can see really well. Sometimes the pattern printed on the material suggests the quilting design. Mm -hmm. All I've done on this uh, batik is follow the design. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it I makes it love pop. the texture that it ended mm -hmm. up with. Makes it pop. The same thing here. This is very McTavishy. Mm -hmm. These spirals. I yep. love this fabric. I don't know where I got it. Um, I wish I had more. Mm -hmm. Isn't that always the case? Absolutely. Um, but I just followed the spirals around. I said, that's perfect. I don't think I could do anything better. And even the background here, this is a kind of a diagonal rain. And I thought, those are the rays of sunshine. Mm -hmm. So I just use those as ideas for how to finish off the quilting. Yeah. And then I think last but not least, let's talk about your two versions of this and, and why you did two yeah. versions. And I think um, that's going to kind of take up our time today. But I think definitely it's right. worth talking about why you did this. So this first piece, this is um, a course I took online called Material Matrix by Sandra Bruce Creative. Mm -hmm. And Sandra Bruce has done some fabulous art quilts. She has a, a really remarkable portrait of Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, and, and, and many other, and so she's, she was mm -hmm. really inspired by portraiture but wanted to be able to teach her matrix design in a class so chose a still life photograph. And as part of the class she teaches you how to select a photograph to mm -hmm. create your own matrix. And then I forgot to bring it with me but what I did is I made myself a two inch picture frame tool out of mat board mm -hmm. um, so that I could view what was going to be in this two inch square and I uh, would use it to try to sew uh, I'm free handing eyeballing all these little angles and things that were going in here in this I think this is a um, seven eight nine ten by eight eighty squares in this mm -hmm. something like only thirty of them are solid squares and all the rest of them are pieced in some way. Wow. So I spent three days making this off of a photograph that had a grid on it. And I was really proud of myself. I thought, wow, that was fun. And I'm, I, I really like how it came out. It's very wonky. Mm -hmm. um, and my husband looked at it and goes, you're not going to hang that anywhere, are you? <laughs> I do love him, but he, he doesn't love wonky. And so I said, well, then I'll take it to school and hang it in my office there. Um, but just because it was spring break and or summer break, um, I thought, what if I tried this in collage? So I tried it in collage, and I spent one afternoon instead making it in collage with the Steamacine Light Riage Applique. And I did the same thing. I, I created, um, I, I created a... Um, foundation on fabric this time, not on parchment, mm -hmm. uh, where I had drawn in the big strokes of the design and the grid, and then I filled it in. Yeah, so you can really see, so we have um, matrix and we have collage, and it's fascinating because it's the same right. photo, it's a, almost identical fabrics, and, mm -hmm. and yet they have such different feels to them. I, I'm pretty proud of the quilting on if you look at the back you, you see a lot of this gray and white you know yeah. these are these are <laughs> sheets that we um, r you know that wore out and <laughs> I take them to the quilting room and I use them for everything so uh, this one had a, a big paisley design on the cup um, I did similar things on the the table but and yet this one's a lot again more graphic because it, you're you're channel quilting more and yeah. along that um that matrix a little more on that cup so i had a lot of fun with that yeah. um this one is bound traditionally with a quarter inch binding this one is bound with sari yarn we twisted had that here. I don't know two if we still colors have any. I don't, yeah i don't know if we I still have here's, any sari here's what yarn. it looks like it's yeah. called um called sari yarn mm -hmm. or banana Oops. yarn yeah and um, I use this for surface design sometimes, mm -hmm. applying it to the top of things. I also like to use it for binding. It's very quick. It's very soft mm -hmm. and organic. Um, what did you call this foot? This is called a braiding foot. And Margaret actually did, it's not, this is not the identical foot that she used, but this is the foot that will accomplish the same task. 
It's a foot that you can put your yarn down through in the front and the little guide in the front of the foot is actually adjustable and then underneath is a slot that that yarn will, will flow underneath. So this can allow you to couch, it can allow you to do some thread painting and keep track or, or keep control of the yarns that you're using on mm -hmm. the surface of your project. So it's a great little foot. I've had a lot of fun with that foot myself. Yeah, so one thing I'd say about the collage is that you can build up a lot of layers of fabric and so you generally want to use a heavier needle, like a <laughs> jeans needle, a mm -hmm. 16, and a, a good strong thread. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer polyester, um, what is it called? Madeira. The, uh, aerofill. The uh, polyester aerofill is what I use thread. for 90% of my quilting. Mm -hmm. I also sometimes use um, Glide, Filtec mm -hmm. Glide, which is 100% polyester. And mm -hmm. I like um, ConnectingThreads.com sells um, a cotton thread for quilting. It's, I think, a 40 weight and comes in a bazillion colors, which mm -hmm. is really nice. Um, I have I have a lot of spools of that, yeah. and I use that for various effects. Yeah. I find thread, that... Thread is, a, thread is an ongoing conversation around here. Well, and, and as I learned with my new machine mm -hmm. is that it likes some threads better than others. This is very true, and that goes to the engineering on these machines, and I have a lot of people that are like, well, why doesn't it like my thread, and I, we don't want to discuss because it's the quality of your thread quite so much, but really what it boils down to is these ten tension systems on baby locks and other high-end machines are very, very highly engineered. They have what are called very low tolerances. It means that they you have to have it just right or it ain't going to like it. Mm -hmm. And so that um, includes the thread that you choose. So as you know, I'm a big bug on threads and needles. So if you ever have a question about what's going to be the right, um, right uh, combination of materials, you just come and ask. All right, Margaret, we, I, I hate to tell you this, but believe it or not, we're out of time. I, I lots, of, <laughs> lots of thank yous and they're inspired. Yeah, Very and I mean, we, like I said, we could literally keep talking for like three hours easily. And I want to thank you so much for coming in today. We've talked about this for a couple of months and we finally got together and did it. And I, I, I've been so inspired by your journey, just watching you and all the stuff you have created on our cute little machine. Well, I'm so excited that you have a machine that does what you need it to do. I, I am too. I'm starting, I'm starting to feel like I'm outgrowing it. Um, yeah. But we are taught well. <laughs> the salespeople are very happy. <laughs> um, at the Mid Atlantic Quilt <laughs> Show uh, in February, I, I went around trying long arms. Mm -hmm. And then I've come here and tried the long mm -hmm. arm here in your mm -hmm. shop. And I think at some point in my future, when I'm ready to retire from mm -hmm. school or if I'm mm -hmm. planning my retirement, mm -hmm. there might be a strategy. coordinate in her future. Absolutely. Yes. There might be a coordinate um, in her future. This is. And we'll finish up with this. Go ahead. We'll we'll, we'll so, with this. Um, thinking about Ukraine, um, this piece oh, yeah. I made, uh, this is based on um, Sharon Pregan's pattern called Waves. And you can buy this digitally on Etsy. Um, her site is Pregan Art, P R I G A N. And she de deals with only upcycled fabrics. She teaches sewing mm -hmm. in Israel, and she has several different kinds of collages and uh, art type quilts that she makes, but only with upcycled mm -hmm. things like. Every, she doesn't buy any mm -hmm. fabric. Um, I went into my scrap buckets. Can oh, yeah. Yeah, scrap buckets. I, I love things that are... Which, by the way, scrap buckets made out of uh, sample fa sample sandwiches that she just repurposed into buckets. So. Yep. I, I have a yep. whole rainbow of these buckets, and mm -hmm. I keep my scraps in here. So I went in here, and I pulled, yep. I pulled bl blues and golds. And um, I didn't have pieces that were long enough in some cases, so you can see that I did some piecing in some strips, mm -hmm. and then I pulled on them and made them curve as I started assembling them into this piece. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. Um, I might add some kind of a sunflower collage element on it mm -hmm. in honor of Ukraine. I might do some surface design, um, applying other materials mm -hmm. to it. I might do something with textural quilting. It's not mm -hmm. a very big piece, right? So I won't. I will have to limit my choices mm -hmm. but um, I'm very excited about uh, mastering this wave technique there you because, go because um, I, I really so. like how this came out <laughs> and, it, and what that tells you is that there's always a new technique out there yeah. you know what we are never ever done with learning with experiencing with trying with exploring with just having fun with our machines with our quilts so today I think was awesome here in the sewing room because we're working on Kimberbell over there in the sewing room. All of our ladies are going to come back tomorrow to finish their, their pillows. We had Margaret. Margaret, thank you so much for coming in today. This was absolutely fantastic. I'm just so thrilled that you were able to join us today. Thank you for having me, Meg. You this are so welcome. And you know what? We're going to get all kinds of comments.
<laughs> I can just tell you right now, people are going to be asking all kinds of questions. All right, I'll, go, you, ho Margaret. <laughs> I'll go home and set up a quilting Facebook page. There you go. Here, and okay. as soon as Margaret has a quilting Facebook page, yes, I will tell you all what it is, okay? And uh, the other thing that Margaret and I are going to do, and I won't guarantee it's going to get done today, but Margaret referenced um, quite a few educators that are out there online, books, mm -hmm. and things, and we're going to put together a little source uh, page of some of the websites and, and uh, designers that you can go to and start learning some of these techniques for yourself as well because we want everybody to be successful with what they're trying. I'm just going to say one thing before yeah. we finish. First of all, I, I bought my machine here and um, it it's because I already knew this was a wonderful service store. Every time my older machines needed service I came here and when it was time for a new machine I wanted to have a, a place where I could bring it in if I was having trouble or needed help with instruction. So Meg was my instructor and she got me off to a pretty good start. Um, that That's really important in, sol in troubleshooting issues, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And um, being able to figure things out. One of my latest um, ventures is I'm starting to make rope baskets. Yes, and, and we have classes in this too, ladies. You know that as well. So this one um, was made from scraps of the wedding quilt and um, I'll be giving that to the to the bride mm -hmm. as well. But it, it's it's just so important to have a local source where you can take classes. Now I teach full time, so I couldn't take classes here very often, mm -hmm. which is why I went to online sources, and mm -hmm. that was helpful during the pandemic as well, because then I could uh, access um, courses any time that suited my schedule. But they have wonderful classes here, and you should take some. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the pop. We love that. So thank you again for coming in. So more power to you people. Okay. If Margaret can do it, so can you. I did this in a class here. There you go. That's right. That's Robin's class, I think. That's Robin Carpenter's yep. class. So check out our class schedule. Um, I will post or I may tell you on wacky but we'll get we'll let you know information about when Margaret has her own Facebook quilting page <laughs> and also when we have that list of resources for you so thank you so much for joining us today I have no idea how I am going to top this next week I haven't a clue but be here next week at four o'clock on Wednesday for wacky Wednesday we're looking forward to it and thank you so much for joining us today so has so in good so in good health. Is that a good one? Thank you. So thank in good you, health. Meg, for having me. You're welcome. Thanks thank for coming. You, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.